Um, thank you to the members of the committee for having me. My name is Tammy Nobles. I am the mother of Kayla Hamilton. July 24, 2002 was one of the best days of my life. I gave birth to a beautiful baby girl and named her Kayla Marie. She was a happy and easygoing baby. Even back then, she loved to smile and laugh. She always kept her friends close and never forgot anyone. She was kind, caring, thoughtful, and funny. She loved life and God. She showed the world that being yourself was okay, and you didn't have to follow everyone else. But sadly, on July 27, 2022, I received the worst news that a parent doesn't want to hear, that my newly 20-year-old 20, 20 daughter, Kayla Hamilton, was murdered in her own room and left on the floor like trash. She, she left behind a mother who loved her, a stepfather, a brother, a younger sister, grandparents, and lots of aunts, uncles, and cousins. At first, we knew very little details of the murder until an arrest was made. The details we learned broke us. At the end of March of 2022, Kayla's murderer was apprehended by Border Patrol, crossing illegally into the U.S. at the southwest border in Rio Grande City, Texas. I am not sure if he was vetted or not, but he was a 16-year-old known gang member affiliated with MS-13 in El Salvador. The MS-13 motto is, motto is kill, rape, and control. He entered the country as an unoccupied alien child. As a UAC, the murderer was allowed to go live with his aunt in Frederick, Maryland. She was also an illegal immigrant. There were issues with him living there, and he went to go live with his half-brother who lived in the same trailer park as Kayla and her boyfriend. My questions are, what protocol was the aunt supposed to follow? If she couldn't handle him, then why not inform the proper authorities? The half-brother tried to get him a job and to do the right thing, but that didn't happen. So the half-brother told him that he had to leave. At the trailer park, an illegal immigrant owned numerous trailers and was subletting them out. That is how Kayla was able to get a place because she didn't make much and had no credit yet. The half-brother asked the owner if she had any rooms for rent. She did. The same trailer as Kayla. Kayla's murderer was living there less than five days before he viciously murdered my daughter. Kayla had two jobs. She was working at a cleaning company and at a grocery store. Kayla had autism, but she was determined to live independently and make her way in this world. And my baby paid the ultimate price. She had just gotten home from work, working the night shift, and said goodbye to her boyfriend that morning when he left for work. She then went to sleep. The murderer went into Kayla's room, strolling her, grabbed her iPod, her iPod charger, and wrapped it around her throat and face while strangling her to death. Kayla grabbed her phone and called her boyfriend, but went to voicemail. The voicemail of the murderer strangling her was was two minutes and 30 seconds long. The murderer then violently sexually assaulted Kayla. Kayla's boyfriend came home from work and found her dead on the floor. The charger cord was so tight, was so tight around her neck and face that her boyfriend had to use his teeth to get it off. The murderer robbed her of her phone and $6. $6 is all my baby had in cash because she used the snack machines at work to get something to eat. He then went to lunch with his half-brother like nothing happened. Local police didn't have enough evidence to arrest the murderer, so Child Protective Services took him into custody and placed him in an unsecured children's home with other children, even knowing that, even knowing that he was a main suspect in a premeditated murder case. When he was arrested for Kayla's murder, he laughed and smirked. For me, this is not a political issue. This is a safety issue for everyone living in the United States. This could have been anyone's daughter. Kayla wasn't doing anything wrong, and she didn't deserve to be murdered. I don't want any other parent to live the nightmare that I am living. I am her voice now, and I am going to fight with everything I have to get her story told and bring awareness of the issue at the border. I will make sure her memory lives on. Murder itself is already taboo, but then you mention MS-13, and nobody wants to touch it. Nothing will change if nobody talks about the problem. The United States government has to secure our border. We need to properly vet all border crossers. The government could have placed a phone call 
to authorities in El Salvador and found out that he was a gang member, but they didn't. If we had stricter border policies, my daughter would still be alive today. Nothing will bring my daughter back, nor the pain, nor fix the pain. I'm not having her here, but I want to prevent this from happening to someone else's child. This is about protecting everyone here in the United States. Thank you.